Hi again, it's Lindy. Um, my kids are in bed and I thought that I would do just another real quickie video about a topic that is in high demand right now. Um, and so I just thought that I would give you my take on it a little bit. Um, that topic is how realistic is it to make money from home reselling on a platform like eBay. Um, I use eBay because e eBay as a method because that is what I use personally. I couldn't tell you for Amazon or Etsy or any of those other platforms. I work strictly off eBay. So how realistic is it to make money from home reselling on eBay? So Everybody knows that eBay is a legitimate company. It's not uh, a scammer site. Um, it is a legitimate way to make money. But I think that a lot of people question realistically how much money can you make on eBay versus how much work you have to actually put into it. There is a lot of people out there that blow a lot of smoke and put up a lot of mirrors about how much money they make. They say that they make six figures and and they're really, really big. And that kind of thing doesn't really help the average person that is looking to just, you know, have a second income or someone who just wants to stay home with their kids. Um, you know, those are the kind of people that I'm talking to right now. Not the people that are looking to, you know, jump into quitting their job and hiring a staff and putting in 80 hours worth of work every week and, you know, making a crazy salary reselling. Right now I'm talking to the average person who is just wanting to stay home with their kids or wanting to supplement their current income. Um, I can tell you some exact numbers. I've already done the math. We are all ready to go. So I'm going to show you just how realistic it is to make money working from home. Okay. So now I don't know what it's like all over the country. I can only use the figures and numbers for my local area. Okay. But what I did do is the salary numbers that I shot for are really high for the area, okay? Um, I shot for a salaried job of $600 a week or $15 an hour for a 40-hour work week. $15 an hour around here is a pretty high salary. Um, I mean, I was making $15 an hour or maybe it was a little more than that. I think it was a little more than that. A um, little more than $15 an hour when I was working in management. So um, this, I'm trying to gear it more towards not just somebody who would go out and get an $8 an hour job. I'm trying to gear it towards someone who might, you know, be needing to supplement um, an income that is a lot more significant than like an $8 an hour job or a minimum wage job. I wanted to shoot for... Uh, for a much higher paying job, just so I can show you how realistic it is and how you can do it, okay? So here's the figures that I came up with. Okay, so let's say, let me give you, let's, let's, let's use a common, a common scenario, okay? Let's say you are a mom, right here that wants to stay home with your kids and not have to put them in daycare. Uh, let's say you want to quit your job, but you worry that either your husband's income alone is not enough to, just to sustain your family, or two, maybe you're a single mom or a single dad, and you're really struggling with daycare fees and you're needing an option to work from home so that you could be with your kids and be home for your kids when they need to come home from school or, you know, whatever. So, okay, so let's say, let's say you have a job making $600 a week. Okay, so 
using the standard family deductions with income tax and state tax, at least for my state in the state of Kansas, if you have a job making $600 a week or $15 an hour for a 40-hour work week, your net income every week is $533, okay? So your take-home is around $530 a week. Now that's if you're claiming all of your deductions and everything. Um, should be getting around $530 a week take home. Okay, so let's say you have one child that needs to go into child care, okay, while you're working. That is around about $180 a week around here. $180 a week for one kid, just one, taking them to daycare. And that is standard eight to five daycare. That's not even considering if you work until six and you need extended daycare or you work weekends and you need extended care on the weekends. I remember when my oldest was three years old, I worked a retail job where I had to be there three weekends out of the month and his daycare went double time on the weekends. It was ridiculous. It was bleeding me dry. I had a job where I was taking home like 400 a week after taxes and 240 of that went to childcare. Yeah. 400 take home, 240 went to childcare. So I was only actually getting to use around $160 of the money I got paid. How crappy is that? And it was a job. I had to bust my butt, y'all. It sucked. I was busting my butt for $160 a week. It was awful. Awful. And my kid had to sit in daycare. It was it was a bad, bad deal. But at the time, it, I needed to do it. It needed to be done. So that's what I did. So, so your take home for a $600 a week job is... $530, and let's take off $180 in child care. Okay, that leaves us with $350 a week in your pocket take home. Okay, so we have $350 a week take home for a job where you get paid $15 an hour. So $350 a week, that's about $1,400 in take home every month after child care expenses. So now, how realistic is it to make that amount of money reselling on eBay at home without going to a nine to five job or an eight to five job or whatever job making that amount of money? So this is the figures that I just pulled out of thin air, but I didn't really pull them out of thin air because they're kind of sort of my numbers. So I'm kind of using some numbers that I have personally. My net profit per item that I sell on eBay is roughly $5. So every time my phone goes cha-ching, 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 I've made a net profit of around about $5. So if we take that figure into account, in order to make a net profit of $350 a week, you need to sell 70 items at $5 profit per item. So 70 items per week. That sounds like a lot, right? Okay, let's break it down a little bit more. 70 items per week breaks down to 10 items a day. That's not so bad, right? 10 items a day sounds much more doable than 70 items a week, right? I know it does. So 10 sales per day, realistically, is all you need to get $350 in net profit per week. Okay, 10 a day. So we are going to break it down just a little bit more to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, here we go. So, at a regular job, you're working 40 hours, right? Okay. But you also have to figure in things like commuting to work, 
you have to figure in the time sitting in traffic and the stress of sitting in traffic, okay? Because sitting in traffic is not fun at all. And you have to figure in gas money to get to work. How far do you drive? How much do you spend in gas? You got to figure all that in. And you also have to think about how much time your children are away from you. How long they're with strangers, okay? So you got to think about all that stuff. So now let's talk about the reselling side, okay? Now, when it comes to time spent reselling, now these are all realistic. These are all my personal numbers, okay? I average about 10 listings per hour. That is if I already have the pictures taken and I'm just sitting down at my computer and I'm just typing it all out. Send, enter, sale, okay? 10 an hour is what I do. But we're being realistic here, right? Okay, so if you're a beginner, there's no way you're going to jump in and list 10 items an hour. It's not realistic. You'll get there eventually, but we're talking like the average Joe, right? So average, I think you could easily do five an hour. Okay, five an hour, that is 10, 12, 12 minutes per listing. That is a lot of time to complete a listing. And that's not even including taking the pictures. Okay, so if you do five listings an hour, okay, so now let's talk about photographing the items. I personally can photograph 20 items in 30 minutes, okay? So that's 40 items an hour, okay? So if we're doing 70 items, which is, you know, our goal for that 350 net profit a week, it would take roughly two hours to photograph 70 items, okay? So now we have, for the week, 16 total hours for listing and photographing 70 items, okay? In order to start to finish 70 items, 16 hours, 16 hours. Granted, that doesn't take into account finding the items or packaging the items, okay? It's really hard to put your finger on sourcing because it's going to be different for everybody depending on where you live. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you've probably heard me say sourcing where I live is pretty difficult because it is. Sourcing where I live is very, very difficult. Um, but still, I can come up with 100 items within... Oh... <sighs> four hours? If I had to pick a number, I would say four hours. I would say two hours at Goodwill and two hours at Salvation Army, DAV, some sort of other thrift shop. Um, and then, you know, randomly scrolling through Craigslist or randomly scrolling through the buy, sell, trade page of Facebook. Um, so I would say about four hours. Four hours. And even still, that's so broken up, it's almost like it's not even work. It's just shopping. <laughs> I mean, really, it's just like shopping. That's all it is. Um, and then if you're packaging 10 items a day, you can usually package 10 items in around about 30 minutes. So if we're taking all of that into account, 30 minutes a day for packaging, 16 total hours a week in listing and photographing 70 listings. You're looking at 19 and a half hours worth of work just for 70 listings, which comes out to $18 an hour. $18 an hour versus $15 an hour and having to pay for childcare. I'll take $18 an hour and not having to pay for childcare. That sounds awesome. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. <sighs> Who lists 70 things and has all 70 things sell? That is correct. 
nobody, who's nobody, has a 100% sell-through rate. It just doesn't happen. You are going to have items that you list that either don't sell or they take months to sell, okay? Most resellers sell between 1 and 2% of the number of items they have listed, okay? Meaning, if you have 100 items for sale, you're roughly going to sell one or two items a day. That is average. That's what an average experienced reseller does. Okay, and that is, that's pretty darn close to what I do personally too. So if you have 100 items for sale, you're going to expect to sell one to two a day. If you have 1,000 items to sell, you're going to expect to have 10 to 20 items a day. Okay, so realistically, you're going to have to list more than 70 items a week. 70 items a week is our goal for sales, but it's not all you're going to list. You're going to have to list more things because some things are going to sit. It's the nature of the beast. It's all going to sit. Some things will sell fast. Some things won't. For instance, tonight I listed a shirt and come to think of it, I probably listed it way too low, um, but I couldn't really find a lot of comparable shirts. It was a shirt. It was a perform. I don't, I can't even say the name of the brand. I'd never seen it before, but it was a bamboo kind of dry fit athletic shirt and it was a performance shirt and I listed it on auction um, with a buy it now of like $13.99 or something and I listed it and it didn't even go up for bid it just flat out sold at buy it now like 20 minutes after I listed it no joke <laughs> 20 minutes and it was gone I was like man should have listed it for more than that. Ugh. And then at the same time, like an hour later, something sold that I've had for sale since like May, which is how long? May, June, July, August, up to four months. Four months it was sitting in my store. And it just sold tonight. So, you know, some things are going to sit. You can't list 70 things and expect all 70 things to sell. That's not how it works. You're going to have to put in some more time and fill your store with things. Um, so if you use that 1% to 2% sell-through rate that I was talking about, you know, the whole if you have 100 items, expect to sell 1 to 2 a day. If you have 1,000 items, expect to sell 10 to 20 a day. Um, if you use that figure, if you're wanting to sell 10 a day, with the $5 average per item profit, then you're going to have to try to maintain about a thousand items. Okay. How realistic is a thousand items? Oh, that sounds like a lot, right? It is a lot. Um, that's why I always tell people be realistic. Okay. There is no way you're going to quit your job, go buy a thousand items, and list them all without taking, like, some serious time. Because where I live, anyway, it takes me a week of looking around to get a hundred items. Okay, so at my rate, you would be looking at gaining a thousand items in ten weeks. Okay. 10 weeks, almost three months. And that's if I don't sell anything. So if I'm selling things while I'm adding things to the store, I'm, it's going to take even more time. So it would probably take at my current level, if I were to just like start over from scratch right now with this vision in my head, which I've built up over time. Um, I'm there now, but I wasn't always there. I was a beginner. I still consider myself a beginner. There's a lot of people out there that are a lot better at this than I am, but I still consider myself an average Joe. I am a casual seller. I'm not like hardcore like a lot of other sellers are. So I have kind of a different perspective, I think. 
but if you want to maintain a thousand items, you need to be thinking about it in terms of months. How long is it going to take for you to get started? Now, that being said, this is an awesome job that you can get started in your spare time. I did more math. I love math. So, okay. I was looking at free time. Okay. So, if we're looking at free time, I just mentioned it might, unless you have a nice cushion and you don't mind being a little risky, um, it would be unwise to just up and quit your job and expect to pull in 350 a week doing this full time, right? So if you wanted to do it in your spare time, I kind of looked at when I work. I work mainly during my littlest's nap time and bedtime. The time between he goes to bed and I go to bed. So I did the math. He usually sleeps about two hours a day um, for naps and I did a rough estimate of 90 minutes because sometimes he sleeps longer, sometimes he sleeps shorter, sometimes I like to use that time to catch up on a show I wanted to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't put his entire nap time for work time. I just did 90 minutes. And then roughly three hours from the time he goes to bed to the time that I go to bed. So that turns into four and a half hours of day that is just adult time. There's no kids. And, and that goes, I did this for my older kid too. Because um, he goes to bed a little bit later than my littlest does. So... Four and a half hours I have of awake kid free time. Four and a half hours a day times seven days comes out to 31 and a half hours. 31 and a half hours. How much listing can I get done in 31 and a half hours? Um, according to my figures, I can do about 100 items. I can get 100 items listed realistically while my kids are asleep and I'm awake. I don't even have to work while they're awake if I don't want to. Granted, I do a lot of my sourcing while they're awake. I don't source while they're sleeping. Um, I can source while they're awake. I can take them with me to the to the Goodwill or, or when I'm going to pick up stuff from private sellers. I can take them with me. They don't like it, but I still do it. And then I do all the rest of the work while they're asleep. So, I'm hoping... <laughs> <laughs> that this gives you a little bit more insight to how realistic it is to make money from home by reselling on eBay. Um, I do really have to stress that it really is something to think about and consider because I have been in a lot of positions that a lot of people are in or are currently in or might be in. I've, I've seriously been through them all. I've been a single mom putting my kid in daycare. I've been a stay at home mom strapped for cash and finding every little thing to sell to try to make some money. I've been there. I've done it. And reselling on eBay has given me the opportunity to not have to struggle anymore. And I'm an average person. I don't, I don't even have a college degree. Okay. If you want to get real, if you want to have real talk, I don't have a college degree. I have had management jobs and I've had retail jobs, I've had desk jobs, I've had food service jobs, I've had a lot of jobs, and none of them have come as easy to making money as reselling on eBay. And that's not even taking into account, I can choose when I work. It's my business. It's my business. I have a store on eBay. I get to decide what goes in my store, how much I sell them for, if I need to make some fast money and I am willing to cut my profits down a little bit, I can 
put stuff on sale that I want to put them on sale to make some extra money real quick. You know, if I know that my son's birthday is coming up and I need to uh, buy him his birthday presents and I need a little bit of extra money, I can just throw my store on sale and sell some stuff real quick to get some money back. I mean, it's... There's nothing like being able to work for yourself. You know, being your own boss, it's... I highly, highly encourage everybody who is considering doing something like this to just do it. To just do it. It's so freeing, and it is possible. It is so possible. And I know that there is a lot of resellers out there, and there's a lot of people making videos, um, and I'm just another one of them. <laughs> but realistically, I wanted to come to people as the average person. You know, I'm not, I'm not a reseller that has employees. My husband doesn't even currently help me. I mean, he watches the kids so I can go source sometimes when he's home. But for the most part, I'm on my own because my husband has a job where he has to go sometimes out of the country or out of the state for work. And so he's not here all the time. So a lot of the time I am a single mom doing this. I'm juggling kids and school and housework and my business and everything all by myself. And I'm telling you, it is possible. There's, you know, a groove you have to get into. There's certain things you have to figure out. But, you know, like I said, I'm an average person. I don't have a college degree. I haven't taken any economics classes or business management classes or buyers classes. I mean, I use common sense for a lot of things and I learn from other resellers like me. So I just, I encourage if, if you've ever thought of doing something like this, even if it's just a secondary source of income to help, every little bit helps. You know, again, I say I've been there. I've been there when I've had like negative 20 in the bank account just waiting for the next payday. And this is a really good opportunity for people to realistically make money. And um, I have another video planned on how to get started selling on eBay when you're flat broke. Because <laughs> I got started selling on eBay when I was flat broke. I mean, no money. And I took a chance on eBay and it worked out. So I'm going to talk to you about that in another video. So, um, but I hope that this has been helpful. Um, I hope that it's kind of given you a little bit more insight to seeing that it is realistic to make money selling on eBay. Um, you just have to be smart about it. You have to be strategic and you have to be organized and pay attention and you have to set goals. You have to know what you're working for. You know, just like we started this whole conversation, you and me, we started this whole conversation on a sales goal or a, uh, a total number of sales goal. And $5 in profit per item is not unrealistic. I mean, five dollars per item is very realistic it's what I run personally and now if you are able to find things where you live where your profitability is higher than five dollars per item then that means you can sell less and make that much money or you could sell the same and make even more money so it all depends on you it all depends on you so I will see you guys with my next video and have a good night. Bye.